Greetings. This is Doc Ock here, coming to you live and direct from Black Facts Studio Central tonight with another installment of Doc Ock at noon and nine. Proverb for the day. The monkey does not see his own hind parts, only his neighbors. The monkey does not see his own hind parts, only his neighbors. Rhodesia. It's a proverb from the country of Rhodesia. Today is all about John Henry. And John Henry is my daddy. Never a better fishmonger did you see. That's how the poem starts off. My daddy was not a fishmonger. Y'all know that already. Clams and oysters worth a holler. Step right up and bring them dollars. Best in town couldn't be prouder. If you don't buy, I'll say it louder. Clams and oysters worth a holler. Step right up and bring them dollars. Best in town, I couldn't be prouder. If you don't buy, I'll just say it louder. That's a fishmonger. That's how they do. They walk up and down the street, hawking their wares, letting everybody know at the bottom and the very top of those stairs that whatever they got is the absolute best. And if you don't buy it for them, all you're going to be is just like all the rest. But if you want the best in the east, the north, and the south, you better open your mouth and come on down without a frown and put that wood on the money on the wood makes the bedding go good. That's what he's looking for. Some money on that wood. And this is the story of John Henry, the father of Louis Michaud. And that's the name of that's the title of our book today. No Christmas. The Life of Louis Michaud, book dealer. So he wasn't a fishmonger. He was a book dealer. What's the difference? Not much. Okay. Only the product. Newport News, Virginia, 1906. Everybody keeps saying, be satisfied with Jesus' love. And he will give us our daily bread. I keep waiting. But we never get any bread. So I have to go out and do things for myself. When I asked Papa for a bicycle, he said, pray, son. The Lord will provide. I prayed a whole year, but even Santa Claus didn't bring me a bicycle. When I asked Papa about it, he said, don't rush the Lord. The Lord will act in due time time. I went to find mother to see what she had to say. Mama was in the kitchen baking shortening bread, shortening bread and singing. God will help if you take the first step. God will help if you take the first step. I said, mother, I never heard you sing that hymn before. That's not a hymn, son. That's a prayer. She explained, you see me washing dishes Sweeping the flow, putting a patch on your daddy's pants. When I sing that, it's my prayer. God is helping me because I'm making an effort. I went outside and walked down the road near our house, thinking about what she said. There was a boy riding a bicycle. The boy got off, leaned the bicycle against the tree, and went to picking berries. I thought I'd follow mother's prayer. And take the first step, quote unquote. I stepped on that bicycle and started off down that road. Ha! Huh. I looked back and there wasn't nobody coming after me. So I said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Mother's prayer worked. Now, all you little ones out there, all you children out there, don't try that at home. Don't even try it somewhere that you roam. Because it might not work out the very same way if you stray. 
remember, this is a story, something that already happened. We already know how this ends. Your story hasn't been written yet. So you might want to be careful before you come to a bad end. Don't let that be your story. John Henry Michaud. Lewis isn't a bad boy. He does his part in the stove, but now he's been missing school. I can't do nothing with him. Some of my customers have been calling him a quote unquote smart Negro, end quote. And they're not referring to his intelligence. He is intelligent, but headstrong, willful. I've not always been there for my children. I spent most of my time building my business. Started off as a merchant seaman. Then after I married Blanche, took the Petland fish. In Newport News, we were starting a family and I needed to settle down, settle down. Near broke my back, but I managed to save enough money to open my own seafood and produce store right here on Jefferson Avenue. Had to do some dealings with white merchants that might be called compromising. Some of my cronies call me Uncle Tom for what I put up with, but I got the last laugh, my own stove and a bar and a restaurant too. We're doing just fine, except Lewis. That's the one exception. He needs more attention than I've been given. When you got nine chilling, it's not easy to keep track. One of them's bound to stray or just fall through a crack. Blanche did teach Lewis his Bible. Matter of fact, without her, I wouldn't have much religion myself. Became a Baptist because of her. Blanche is a good wife and I love her, but she's got her faults. Doted on our boy Lightfoot from the day he was born with that blasted call over his face. Said it meant he was destined to some high mission. I tell her it's wrong for a parent to favor any child. But Blanche can't help herself. She tries with Lewis, but he sees how she is with his brother. Blanche is strung tight as a banjo. Doctors say it's a nervous condition. And dealing with the day-to-day -day keeping of the house takes its toll. She don't have a whole lot of fortitude. Lord knows we have enough chilling. But she never got over the four we lost. She's right about Lightfoot, though. He's special, and he knows what he's about. Lewis is searching. He has to find his way, like a sailor who drops anchor in many ports before he finds a dock that feels right, a place of belonging. I believe Lewis and I come from the same soil. When I'm discussing my ideas about the need for our race to be self-sufficient, his eyes never leave my face. The other day, I heard him talking with other Negro boys about standing up for themselves. He said, quote, you got to do for yourself because nobody's going to do for you what others, what you need to do for yourself. Made me proud. The way that boy thinks, I have to remind myself He's only nine years old. Blanche Michaud. When I first met John Henry, he was a simple man, full of dreams. I loved to hear his sea stories and his plans for making something of himself. And he wasn't just trying to impress me. He meant what he said. He's a respected businessman now and a good provider. All he needed was some religion. And praise God, he finally got on board that train, that train to glory. But Henry lives at the stove. Even after closing, he finds something that needs doing or he's meeting with some highfalutin politician or such. He don't have time to take me out like when we were courting. Seems like all I ever do is make babies and pick up after people. 
Mama warned me about marrying a light-skinned man with straight hair and ambition. Said people see me as less than him because I'm not pretty. She sure was right about that. Most days I find myself feeling lonely. Thank the Lord for Lightfoot Solomon, the joy of my life. Henry expects Lightfoot to take over the store after he's gone. But I keep telling Henry, the Lord has bigger plans for our son. Much bigger plans. Lewis is still just a boy, but he could school. We could school him to take over when Henry retires. He's a sharp one, sometimes too clever for his own good. He might see the respectable path if he wasn't so busy getting himself into trouble. Henry seems to expect me to straighten him out, but that's a father's job. I've spent many a sleepless night lying in bed thinking about Lewis, trying to figure him out. I guess it must be hard living in the shadow of an older brother who was born for greatness. Stealing may just be his way of saying, look at me, look at me. I try, I do, but I'm tired. And sometimes I feel like the room I'm in just keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller, so small I can hardly even breathe. 19.08. Lewis, when I get home today, I hear Ruthie crying like her world is ending. Nobody seems to be paying her any mind. So I go to Ruth's crib to check on her. I can tell she's been at it for a while. She's all red in the face and stinking like she's messed herself. Ooh, we. Oui. I try to make her stop bawling, but can't. And mama's just sitting at the kitchen table, staring out the window. Ruth's having a fit in there, mother. She don't answer. Mother, I say, Ruth, I hear her, is all she says. She says it real quiet, like doesn't even look at me. I run back to Ruth and pat her on the head. Woo! She smells so bad, I don't want to pick her up. But she's screaming now, and I want her to stop. I wonder where my brothers and sisters are. Maybe they could deal with it. Mama, please, she doesn't come. I'm getting a clean diaper when Papa comes home. Go on now, he says. I'll deal with this. I go outside and cover my ears until finally Ruthie stops crying. Then I start crying. Blanche. I need a little quiet. Just just one hour. That's all I need. I just need one, one hour, please. I give Courtney some money from the tin. I keep behind the sugar and have her take Julius, Norris, Margaret, Benny, and Jenny to get ice cream. I tell her to take them for a walk after a good, long walk. One of the nice, long, slow strolls through the park. Then I sit myself down with a nice cup of hot coffee. One hour is all I'm asking. That's all I'm asking. Just, just, just one hour. I get 15 minutes. 15 minutes before Ruthie starts in on me. I know I should go to her. Her diaper, diaper likely needs changing, but I can't make myself move. It won't hurt Ruthie to cry a little bit. Too much holding will spoil a child. Thank God Lewis gets home. Lord knows where that boy has been or what he's been up to. But right now, I'm just glad he's here. He could tend to Ruthie. One hour is all I'm asking. Just one hour. When John Henry comes home, he touches my hand. With the tenderness I haven't felt in a long time. You need to rest a while, he says, helping me to stand. Don't worry about supper. In my mind, I'm shouting, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Henry. But I don't think I'm saying it out loud. I'm concentrating on getting my feet to move. I'd run if I could. 
Finally, I'm in bed. It feels good to lie down. So good. Henry touches my face, then leaves me. It's quiet. Quiet. Thank the Lord for a little quiet. Thank the Lord for a little quiet. Intake clerk. Central State Hospital. Petersburg, Virginia. Well, we got another crier. That new patient, Blanche Michaud. Of course, the doctors are calling it nervous exhaustion, quote unquote. I just write down what they tell me. That's all I do. I don't care. She's exhausted, all right. Nervous too, but in the days back when this place was a central lunatic asylum, we called it hysteria. Now they're trying to be nicer. So people won't feel shame by being here. You get reprimanded for the word crazy. But it seems to me that about says it. Do I do feel sorry for Mrs. Michelle, though? All them chilling, 10 or 11 my here. She's like that old nursery rhyme. The old woman in the shoe. I tell you, these men, they get us pregnant, then gone back to work. And we don't see them again until dinner time, if we're lucky. Or the next time they want some honey. When he brought her in, she just keeps crying or sleeping. End quote. I wanted to say, well, mister, when was the last time you fixed her dinner or took her out dancing? That's what I want to know. Sometimes women like her are just lonely. Maybe Mrs. Michelle will be one of them that snaps out of it pretty quick. Some do. A few months in here and they're okay. Just need some rest is all. She was crying when she came in, but she kept telling her husband things to remember about taking care of the children. Must love them. Parents do better if they have a reason to get back home. 1909. Lightfoot Solomon Michaud. Things haven't been the same since mother got home from that mental institution. Papa treats her like a child and they say things to each other that a man and wife should not. I made the mistake of telling Papa I think he should be more patient with her. He told me in no uncertain terms to mind my own business. All I can do is pray on it. She's in God's hands. And Papa has a heavy burden to bear. He's an important man, superior to most. Men like him need some leeway, especially from the family. He was right to chastise me. I don't want conflict between us. There's been enough because of my marriage to, to marry Eliza. Though he was not he has not been disrespectful. Papa certainly has not welcomed her in with affection. I am keeping faith that time will enable him to accept her as my wife and his daughter-in-law. Mary is a formidable woman, opinionated too, which may make winning Papa over a challenge. He prefers a woman who is content to remain in her husband's shadow. Lord knows Mary can be a handful, but she is surely good for me. Strong, industrious, diligent, and frugal. She will serve us well in our business and whatever the future brings. Lewis doesn't help telling me and everyone who cares to listen that I chose Mary because of her light skin. And Papa, for reasons I don't understand, encourages him. There's something between Lewis and Papa that runs deep. Now, we're going to leave off right there after the story of Lewis Michaud. No, Lewis Lightfoot. Excuse me. After the story of Lightfoot Solomon Michaud. Lightfoot Solomon. All right. But well, I hope you're liking that story. I'm finding it pretty interesting myself. The Life of Louis Michel, Michaud, book dealer, New York City, 
Harlem. Hardcore. They told him he couldn't do it, so he did it. Now, as for you out there, all you little children, you know what time it is and you know just what to do. Lay that little head down on that little pillow, on that little bed. Close those, yeah, your eyes and wait for the sun to rise. When you see that those sunbeams coming in through, those, through that window, go ahead and open them eyes and greet the day in a brand new way. That's what you need to do if you hear what I say. As for you adults, we're still looking for those donations, 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 donations. I'd say it like my friend, Mr. Chop Chop used to say, that's all it takes to get in. Get on in. We'll even send you a gift in the mail. We'll send you one of these buttons or we'll send you a, um, we'll either send you a button or a refrigerator magnet, just like one of these right here. But you got to send in a donation and you need to include your address so that we can send it back to you. Okay. Include an email address too, in case something happens in the mail and it doesn't get to you. All right. So go ahead Make those donations to our 202020 campaign. If you're on Facebook, the button is right below. If you're not, go to the website, www.blakfacts.org, which is where you'll find me and the page. It says donation on the tab. Click the button. Make your donation. Do it right now and join the Black Facts Nation. Meanwhile, we're checking out. We'll be back tomorrow. We'll be black tomorrow. Because we don't go back. We go forward only. Backwards never. That's the only way we move. So we'll see you black here tomorrow at noon and again at nine. Until then, we pray that all goes real fine for you and yours.